We have heavily been exploring the religion of Islam here in FTD Facts and over time we have found a collection of misconceptions and myths and some straight up lies about Islam and in this episode we're going to be looking at 10 of the biggest lies about the religion of Islam. Welcome back to FTD Facts guys my name is Leroy Kenton. We got a very interesting episode coming right up up so make sure you watch from 10 all the way down to 1 because I don't want you to miss any of the information that I'm going to be sharing in this episode. The first lie is Muslims worship a moon god. So some non-Muslims mistakenly believe that Allah is an Arab god or a moon god or some type of idol. However Allah is in the Arabic language a proper name for God and Arabic speaking Christians also use the name Allah for God. Now one of the main factors of this belief is because one of the first uses of the crescent moon came from the 2nd century BC where it represented the ancient Mesopotamian moon god Nana and now today the crescent moon is associated with Islam. So many non-Muslims say well look you worship the moon god there's even a moon in the symbol of your religion. Next up at number 9 most Muslims are Arabs. Okay so Islam is often associated with Arab people but did you know that Arabs make up only 15% of all Muslims? The country with the largest Muslim population is actually Indonesia and large numbers of Muslims are also found in Asia, Africa, Europe as well as other parts of the world. Muslims are encouraged to learn Arabic because they believe that the only language that you can really get the full extent of the Quran is in Arabic. Islam oppresses women. Practices like forced marriage, spousal abuse are actually things that contradict Islamic law and most of the bad treatment towards women actually come from people's own evil natures and their own cultures and their belief and it's completely separate from the faith of Islam itself. Muslims are extremists. Now this is a big one. Many Muslim leaders and scholars frequently speak out against all forms of extremism and they offer different explanations and interpretations of Muslim teachings that have been twisted by others to promote extremism. Muslims believe the entire Quran taken as a complete text gives a message of hope as well as peace and faith and good virtues and any form of extremism cannot be justified under proper interpretation of the Islamic faith. Oh boy! Islam is intolerant of other faiths. Muslims are constantly reminded that they are not the only ones who worship God. Specifically Jews and Christians are called the people of the book in the Quran meaning that those are people who also received previous revelations from God and are also can be seen as true worshippers of God. Also in Surah 2 verses 256 in the Quran it says there is no compulsion in religion and this is interpreted to mean that you cannot force any want to become a Muslim. You still gotta respect other people's beliefs. Halfway in at number 5, Jihad means holy war. So Jihad in Arabic does not mean holy war. It actually means to strive or to struggle or to persevere. And Jihad can be something that's done personally or can also involve a community. So in effect, Jihad really means to become closer to God and this type of struggle, Jihad, is to ensure that a peaceful and equitable community still continues to exist. Of course self defense is acceptable to protect yourself and your community from any sort of like dangers. However, any form of offensive aggression is prohibited in Islam. All right, number four, Islamic prayer doesn't really have any meaning. Most people now know that Muslims are to pray five times a day. And now in Islam, there are several benefits to prayer. The daily prayers help keep Muslims minds on God and it helps Muslims to remember the Quran because they recite passages of the Quran as well as it's a time to go before God to express thanks, to ask for forgiveness, to look for guidance in your life. So there's a whole lot of meaning for Muslims when it comes to prayer. Alright number 3. Jesus is completely irrelevant in Islam. That's actually not true. Jesus however is revered as a prophet and the Messiah in Islam. The Islamic faith believes that Jesus will return as a Messiah and defeat the Antichrist. This view is also very similar to the Christian view. The only difference is that Muslims don't view Jesus as the son of God. He's just seen as a prophet when you compare it to the Christian faith. Alright guys we got two more left. So the crescent moon is a universal symbol of Islam. It's actually yeah it's not. 
Okay, so the early Muslim community did not really have any sort of symbols or anything. Now the crescent moon, as well as the star symbol, they actually predate Islam by several thousands of years. And as a matter of fact, they weren't affiliated with Islam at all until the Ottoman Empire placed it on their flag. And over time, the symbol became more associated with Islam. But it's not actually their official symbol. That just doesn't exist. And the number one biggest lie, myth, misconception, about Islam is that Muhammad is the founder of Islam and Muslims worship him. Muslims believe that Muhammad was God's final prophet and communicated God's final revelation to humanity. Muslims consider Adam, the first man created, to actually be the first Muslim because he was of course surrendered to the will of God, and that's what the term Muslim means, one who surrenders to the will of God. Muhammad is held in great esteem, but he's not to be worshipped because worship is only meant to be directed towards God and it's completely forbidden to worship anyone or anything else. Muslims may, however, celebrate Muhammad's birthday similar to the way that Americans celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you in this episode. This was your brief look at 10 misconceptions, myths, and lies about Islam. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below about anything that I mentioned in this episode and also what other lies do you know about it'll be interesting to see what you guys comment below and don't forget guys I take requests on FTD facts so if you have any suggestions for future videos also put those below as well now for all you amazing awesome overachievers who made it to the end here's another video that you definitely want to check out also my social media links are below in the video description section so you can follow me over there as well and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button ring that bell to join the ftd facts family and keep up to date with our daily episodes okay guys you have been super awesome i can't wait to see you in the next episode